If you're a doll like me, you were forced to read books growing up. Whether it be through summer reading lists or weekly chapters, books were my job. Because of this, I grew a harsh distaste for them and saw them a bit like a baker sees a cake. However attractive its appearance, it still worked. No! Fast forward to quarantine, lives are shutting down and isolation is breeding loneliness. A man can only play video games for so long before he will spontaneously combust. And so I found myself partaking in long nights of wall staring and sheep counting. Well, more like TikTok scrolling and reality TV binging, but you get the idea. On one such night, mouth munching Oreos and heart beating wondering if Josh would recouple with Emma, I spotted a strange sight on my Cheeto stained vest. A book. I recoiled at the sight of such, as I was being entirely composed of subway surfer induced serotonin, and the sight of actual literature, no offense to my dear love island, made me react much like Bill Cosby would react when seeing an underage girl. What the fuck are you doing outside my closet? Obviously, I tried casting more warding spells before I realized their ineffectiveness and instead went to pick it up and throw it into my nether realm, where nothing that entered would ever be found again. But before I did this, I noticed the title, The Way of Kings. This title might seem insignificant to some of you, but it very much flagged with me as my friend had told me about how much she enjoyed reading a book by this very same name. Of course, I was a creature of reality television, so I barely paid attention. But attention was paid, and it was remembered here. I stared at it for a long moment and then looked back at my laptop and the Oreos. Then I thought, fuck it. You guys remember the moment when you found out the Earth wasn't the only planet in the world? A moment you try a new food and you know it's going to be your new favorite? Or you watch a movie that you know you're going to come back to see again? It's the moment that Harry Potter finds out he's a wizard. Or that Percy Jackson finds out he's a demigod, or the moment Lucy finds the closet to Narnia. Simply put, it's the moment you realize that there's a whole new world out there, and the wonder that it contains. The Way of Kings was my drug, and I couldn't get enough. It transformed me from my Jabba the Hutt style Cheeto devouring form, to a full on fantasy nerd who just needed more. The rest of the series came in kind, and I caught up on the series within 6 months. Keep in mind, these books are long, and they aren't the fastest paced books in the world, but as someone who loved fantasy games and television, I didn't realize that there was a whole other avenue of entertainment that I could tap into. All I had to do was discard the notion that reading was my job, and it became my play. Keep in mind, I'm a student, so I have to read things for school all the time that drain my soul and threaten to turn me back into the Cheeto devourer, but on the odd bus ride or pocket of free time, my soul is renewed through the act of reading and devouring stories instead of Cheetos. This isn't an ad for The Way of Kings, and the book definitely isn't the most beginner-friendly material, but anyone out there still hesitant on whether or not they should be reading, please look no further than this. It's like a genuine third eye opens and your imagination can run loose. Not only can you experience a whole new myriad amount of stories, but its effects show up in other areas of your life. Your vocabulary is heightened, at least in my case, those 30 page articles my professors would assign go by a lot quicker when you can understand every third word instead of every 23rd word. You genuinely feel like you have something to look forward to. When life is tough and you don't feel like there's a goal in the near future to keep you grounded and going, the world of novels can offer you an alternative reason to push through the day. Readers also have beautiful communities where people get together to talk about books and experience them together. It's truly amazing. If you've made it to this part of the video, I want to recommend you guys two books to start out and hopefully dive you deeper into the world of novels. The first is for my fantasy sci-fi lovers out there, Red Rising. Red Rising isn't a book, it's an addiction. It tells the tale of a society divided into a hierarchy based on color. Not the color of one's skin, but their color. Each person is assigned a class tier akin to their status named after a color with the golds ruling society and the reds serving as something like slaves. The book tells the story of a young red boy named Darrow who finds out the truth about the reds place in society and seeks to tear the world apart in search of his vengeance. I seriously could not put this book down. It's written beautifully, it's fast paced, and the action is easy to follow. For a beginner, I would highly, highly recommend this book. Even if you're not a sci-fi or fantasy fan, read this. The next book I want to recommend you guys to read, after you've begun to read a bit more and can take on higher level novels, is George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire. 
These are my favorite books of all time. The dialogue is masterful. The prose is amazing. Don't let having seen the Game of Thrones show make you feel like you know what's going to happen. You most certainly do not because the creators strayed very far from the source material. My flavor of fantasy is not the pure heroes taking on the evil demons, but a more nuanced level of character dynamics and relationships, and more shades of gray in regards to who the real villain truly is. And A Song of Ice and Fire delivers all of that and more. I'll leave you with this message. Reading is a universe. Don't bow your head to the ground. Look up.